At times, Josh Gordon looked downright heroic on the field, but unlike a superhero battling an arch nemesis, the only person who could stop Gordon was himself. Going back to middle school, Gordon got hooked on Xanax, codeine, and weed. He became addicted to the high because it helped numb the extreme anxiety he felt every day of his life. In high school, he joined a gang. When he was 17, he was arrested for credit card theft. With just about everything else going wrong in his life, Gordon always had special powers when it came to sports. At 6'3", 211 pounds, he was a standout wide receiver gaining attention from FBS schools. But when it came time to choose where to play in college, Gordon was left with few choices even as a three-star recruit. His credit card theft probation prevented him from living outside the state of Texas. So with that, he chose to play at Baylor. After a freshman season where he rarely got to play on offense, Gordon was primed for a big opportunity his sophomore year in 2010. That year, he was the team's second leading receiver, and with an impressive 17 yards per reception, he was no doubt Baylor's big play threat. Sadly, as Gordon started to turn the heads of NFL scouts, he was found asleep in a Taco Bell driveway and arrested for possession of marijuana. During his time at Baylor, Gordon racked up over 10000 a month while dealing weed. One coach at Baylor helped him cheat on his drug tests, but that offseason he failed a test and was suspended indefinitely. This good versus evil cycle would doom Gordon for the rest of his career. Just about every time things looked on the up and up, down he would go with substance abuse and suspensions. With his Baylor days numbered, Gordon decided to transfer to Utah. Immediately after stepping on the practice field, he put his human highlight reel capabilities on full display. One former Utah player said, He was a freak of nature and probably the best and most gifted athlete I've ever seen. Once again though, Gordon failed a drug test and never actually played a game for Utah. Meanwhile that year, Baylor produced one of the best seasons in the school's history, going 10-3 with RG3 winning the Heisman Trophy. It was a sad reality for Gordon, who watched some of his best friends achieve great things, while he was more or less forced to transfer and then sit out. Still, with his raw talent and what he did manage to put on tape at Baylor, it was time to turn the page and look toward the NFL's supplemental draft. A draft meant for players who face eligibility questions in college. In the end, he'll he'll be successful if he wants to be successful. And uh, that's all on him. You know, he knows that. He knows he, he's used up all his chances and everybody's watching. Before the supplemental draft, Josh Gordon was unsure if he'd even get picked. Either way, he was eager to sign with a team and put the past behind him. He said, Scouts want to know what kind of character guy I am. They want to know if I can be trusted. They want to know if I'm going to be a guy that always has off the field issues. I want to make it clear. I'm not going to be that guy. In the end, the 2012 supplemental draft had only one player selected and it was Josh Gordon in the second round. The Browns were willing to sacrifice their second rounder the next year to take a risk on Gordon and the heavy baggage that came with him. The Browns offense lacked in the playmaking department and desperately needed a spark. They had recently retooled their offense with quarterback Brandon Whedon and running back Trent Richardson in the regular draft that year. But let's just say those picks did not age well. Whedon threw more picks than touchdowns during his time in Cleveland and Richardson averaged 3.3 yards per carry in his career. Despite so much going wrong around him and having not played competitive football in well over a year, Gordon quickly found his stride and finished as one of the best rookie wide receivers in the league. Toward the end of that season, Whedon said Gordon made strides that he'd never seen any athlete ever make. That offseason though, Gordon received a two-game suspension from the NFL for violating the substance abuse policy. He had admitted to taking codeine, an addiction he'd battled going back to middle school. When he got back to the field week three, he put up 10 receptions for 146 yards and a touchdown. Later that season, he would become the first receiver to ever rack up 200 yards in back-to-back -back games. In total, he had 498 yards in those two games. And even with those missed games, he still led the league in receiving yards, 
and was voted a first team all pro. Now, while on top of the field production wise, Gordon had a pregame ritual where he would either smoke or take multiple shots of whiskey. For every game of his career, he had something in his system. Still, 2013 was a magical year that also coincided with a big rise in fantasy football. Gordon held a special place in many hearts across the country. Mind you, that was just his second year in the league. Everyone was wondering what he could do the next season with a full slate of games. In July 2014, though, Gordon was arrested for a DUI. In the next month, with just weeks until the season began, the NFL suspended him for the entire year for once again violating the substance abuse policy. Later, due to the NFL's new policy, that suspension would be reduced to 10 games. In Gordon's first game back, he didn't miss a beat, but after that he would fail to hit 100 yards in a game for the rest of the season. It was clear something was wrong. On the day before the final game, Gordon blacked out and missed a team meeting, so the Browns suspended him. Then in February 2015, the NFL suspended him for the entire year. And this time, it truly was the entire year. He published a letter saying how he continually had failed himself as a teenager, as a college player, and now as a professional. In early 2016, Gordon applied for a reinstatement but was denied due to another failed drug test. In July, the NFL reinstated him but handed him a four-game suspension to begin the year. At the end of September, with his suspension soon coming to an end, Gordon announced his decision to step away from the NFL and enter a rehab facility. This would be the second year in a row where Gordon played zero games. During this time, he stayed sober for six months before relapsing once again. The NFL didn't reinstate him until week 13 of the 2017 season. Once more, he failed to replicate the 2013 success, but still found a way to be productive. And with all the time off, his return was actually quite impressive. Gordon managed to avoid suspension the following offseason. He played in the Browns opener, but after that game, out came reports that Gordon once again violated the team's trust in him. After flirting with a trade for years, it was clear the Browns were ready to move on. At this point in his career, Josh Gordon still carried this magical aura everywhere he went. Every fan base in the league was clamoring to get a top 10 talent at a dirt cheap price. When he landed with the Patriots, the parallels drawn to Randy Moss's New England revival ran rampant. Moss had also come with a checkered past and his career in 2007 was seemingly nearing the end. But then he reignited the flame and broke the NFL's receiving touchdown record in a season, Tom Brady broke the passing TD record, and the Patriots went 16-0. Unfortunately for Gordon, who struggled with pressure his whole life, part of the Patriots fan base was truly expecting something close to Randy Moss 2.0. Both receivers were seen as athletic freaks, and the Patriots had developed a reputation for running a tight ship. They had a plan for Gordon, and part of that plan was a 24-7 security team, or I guess you could call it a surveillance team. Gordon's first few weeks certainly weren't Moss level, but he did have some highlights including catching Brady's 500th TD. After that he had a couple 100 yard performances. Gone were the days where his talents were wasted on sub 500 Browns teams. It truly seemed like Gordon could be a difference maker on a championship contending team. Then the inevitable suspension hit. During the Patriots bye week, Gordon managed to evade the Patriots security team and give in to his demons yet again. This time, the suspension cost him playoff games and even the Super Bowl, as the Patriots went on to beat the Rams in Super Bowl 53. At this point, I sound like a broken record, but once again, Gordon was reinstated by the NFL in August. He was still one of the more effective contributors in an overall lackluster Patriots receiving core. But in week six, he suffered a knee injury that would send him to IR. Once he was back to full health, the Patriots cut him. It was clear there was something wrong going on behind the scenes. The Seahawks claimed Gordon off waivers. This was yet another place with a reputation of being able to fix guys who would come in dressed in red flags. But Gordon never caught more than two passes in a game for the rest of the season and was suspended once more before the year was over. In 2020, the Seahawks re-signed Gordon, but the NFL wasn't willing to reinstate him until December 20. 
21st of that year. On December 22nd, just one day into his return, Gordon was suspended indefinitely. That would be the end of his Seahawks tenure. During his suspension, Gordon joined the fan-controlled football league. In September 2021, a now 30-year-old Gordon was reinstated and signed with the Chiefs, but he failed to ever make an impact in Kansas City. On the bright side though, he ended the season without receiving a suspension. The Titans took their shot with Gordon the next year, but at this point, he really had nothing left to contribute in the NFL. In 2023, Gordon was drafted into the XFL by the Seattle Sea Dragons. He was able to make some solid contributions there. The XFL has more lax drug testing than the NFL, and there's been no public statement from Gordon on the status of his sobriety. Though it's certainly a good sign that he was never suspended while on the Chiefs or Titans. Right now, the XFL XFL has plans to return again next year, and Gordon is expected to be back as well. Overall, Josh Gordon's story is about so much more than football and his heroic talents. It's a battle of overcoming demons that he's still fighting today, and that he'll be fighting long after his playing career is over. There's really no end zone when it comes to addiction.